Microbes have been on this planet for billions of years. The entire planet runs on microbes. Every ecosystem starts and ends with microbes. Every food chain, the oxygen production in our atmosphere is mainly microbial. Microbes, or microorganisms, form the foundations of our ecosystems. As our urban landscapes have become increasingly sanitized and less biodiverse, there is building research that shows the depletion of these invisible allies and the negative effect this is having on our health. So I've come to Amsterdam to find out just how central microbes are, both to human health and the environment more broadly. The world's first microbe zoo. So this is a zoo, but I think we're about to go to quite a special part of it. Jasper, good morning. Jasper Burks is head of Artist Microbia. Nice lab coat. Thanks. Nice and white. <laughs> Am still? I going to get one of those as well? Of course you are. <laughs> so, Microbia. Okay, we're attached to a zoo, but this is a particularly special part of the zoo, isn't it? Yeah. We make invisible life visible. Uh, a world of bacteria, fungi, viruses, well, you name it. Um, and it's actually the first place, the first time ever that this has been done. So, can we see some of them now? Of course. Should we go and have a look? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Let's go. First opened in 2014, Microbia is part of the main zoo in Amsterdam, introducing the world of microbes to visitors, starting in the lift. Look up. Eyelash mites, with bacteria living on them, which in turn carry even tinier viruses. When you look from really close, a new world is revealed to you. Welcome. To microbe. I'm already feeling slightly. You are? Okay. We're just, I good, mean, that's good, just good. unbelievable. So they're on the end of my eyebrows, are they? They're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Jasper, a very basic question What is a microbe? We're not completely sure as well. I mean, there's many different definitions on what microbes are, um, but we're kind of sticking to the easiest one. Um, and that's life that's too small to be seen by the naked eye. So when it's on your hand, you can't see it, but it's alive. We call it a microbe. Um, that means it's bacteria, fungi, yeast, algae, micro animals like the, the water bears or tardigrades. Uh, and to some microbiologists, even viruses are part of the microbe world. But the cool thing is that it's a huge part of life. Probably estimates now um, is that about 95% of diversity on this planet is, is microbial. Give us a sense, Jasper, of just how important microbes are to life on Earth and life functioning. Well, as a species, we as humans always think we're really important on, on a global scale, of course, which, which is the case up to a certain point. But if you look at the evolution of life, we're just a tiny speck. I mean, microbes have been on this planet for billions of years, nearly four billion years, and we've only been here for a few hundred thousand. So the entire planet actually runs on microbes. Every ecosystem starts and ends with microbes. Every food chain, um, the oxygen production in our atmosphere is mainly microbial. And that also means that our bodies also run on microbes. So our own ecosystem is also microbial. Um, so what are we looking at here? So this is our wall of microbes. So what we did is we made a print of all the microbes that are around you. Um, of course, not all because there's trillions of species more, but because there's still a lot of people that, that have a very negative view on microbes. So they think that all microbes are bad, but most of them are either harmless or really good for you. So that's why we did this, to just show that we're living in a microbe world. I'm interested, Jasper, in there being a shift in the microbes that we have in our bodies, particularly if we live in an urban environment. Well, I, I can tell you, of course, but it's way more fun if you actually look at your own microbes. So let's go to the body scan, right. and you can actually travel through your own body and meet your own microbes and see what happens since we've started living in these urban environments. Okay, it sounds a little terrifying, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun, don't worry. Here we go. Okay, so I'll step on here with you. Yeah. So this is us. Oh my God, that is actually us. Yeah. I've got lots of microbes in my head. Well, in your nose, your, your mouth. Um, your mouth is also a really interesting place, which we'll come to later. And now like a, well, real weatherman, you can actually go to the different places in your body. Okay, so we're in the large intestine now, which is sort of the center of the microbial presence inside the human body, is that right? Yeah, it's actually kind of the capital of your microbiome. About 99% of everything you have in and on you is um, 
is in your intestines. Um, and it's, it's about 100,000 billion bacteria, um, which makes you actually more microbe than human. So you're actually, well, nothing more than kind of a meat suit for your microbial <laughs> ecosystem. Um, which we're, is just, we're just vessels for we're the just microbes vessels, to yeah, exist. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We're, 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 we're eco, really. We're an ecosystem. Um, which is a good thing because, of course, they're not there for no reason. They have a lot of very important functions. I mean, a lot of people, of course, know that they're important for digestion, uh, but they also produce a lot of hormones and vitamins that your body can't produce itself. Um, they train your immune system. They're kind of a first-line defense to keep pathogens away. And recently, we also discovered that they're having a, a big impact on how you're feeling and how you're behaving through the so-called gut-brain axis. And nowadays you see that more and more psychologists, for instance, are actually looking at a, a, an imbalance in your intestinal flora um, to explain why you might be feeling uh, depressed or have other mental issues. So from, from top to bottom, they're really important for the functioning and the health of your body. It turns out nature had it all worked out all along. It just it's took a us a long time system. to realize yeah, it, didn't yeah. it. It's a perfect system, yeah. which we are now yeah, really messing up. Well, just that idea of putting trust back in natural processes, rather than thinking that we must have a sort of medicalized and sanitized solution. solution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can we do a different part of the body then? I mean, can we go into the lungs, for example? Yeah, or your mouth that you just into mentioned. Into the mouth, okay, yeah. It's yeah. one of the most dynamic places. You're eating, you're breathing, you're drinking, you're kissing. So this is actually one of the most dynamic places that you'll find in your body, microbially speaking. So there's about 10 billion bacteria here, which isn't a really, it isn't a, a huge number, but it's mainly the diversity. It's over 400 different species that we find in our mouth. And the cool thing is when you kiss, for instance, you also interchange them. We actually found out that in a 10 second French kiss, you interchange up to 80 million bacteria. And the longer you're together, so the more you kiss, for instance, the more your mouth actually starts to look alike in terms of bacteria. Um, because so you really do grow together. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. The microbes that live in the human body change during our growth until we're three years old and then become stable until adult life. The types of food eaten, the environment where the person lives and the people and animals that the person interacts with all impact the body's microbiota. I mean, we've got a, a real working lab in here. Yeah. What is the kind of work that goes on here? We cultivate all the microbes, 140, 150 species in the museum that you can actually see with your own eyes. But we cultivate nearly 300 different species in the lab. And that's simply because if you want to show a water bear, for instance, we also have to cultivate the algae that it eat. But here we have to cultivate the entire food chain. So this is the farm? This yeah. is the microbe farm, yeah, yeah sure. Okay. <laughs> people actually see microbes for the first time. It's often also that people see, well, microbiologists for the first time. Dr. Naylor de Klerk is one of those microbiologists and team leader of the Micropia Lab. I've got a million questions. I but, understand. Uh, let's just start with, I think you've set up a sample for us here, haven't you? Yes, this is a nutrition source in the bottom and we laid our hand on top of it for a short time. Mm -hmm. um, and then we let it incubate in one of our incubators um, at the right temperatures so that all the bacteria and, and fungi that are on there, uh, yeah, are allowed to grow. And this is uh, the result, so after about a week, this is uh, the growth that we can see. You can see there's a lot of different types that you can see on here. And the interesting thing is that this is just one example because it's completely different for everyone. If you would make your handprint, it would look completely different than, for instance, from mine. So in this print, you yeah. very clearly see all the fingers, actually. So you see, for instance, here the thumb, the index finger and the middle and the, the fourth one and the little pinky. But in general, uh, we can say that there's about 150 different species of bacteria uh, on a hand and about 30 different species of fungi. There is a smell, isn't there, slightly? Yeah, yeah, all microbes have their own smell yeah. as well. So, right, so I'm kind of, I'm probably taking in some microbes when I inhale now then. Uh, maybe a little bit, but that's fine. It's no problem at all. No, no, I'm hoping that's yeah. going to be a good thing. <laughs> yeah. From all I've learned about microbes, that's a good thing. Yeah, they're good, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Not all good, but mostly Not good. all of them, but it's yeah. just one or two percent that it can actually make us sick, so it's a very okay. small percentage. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about that then. So in the last few years, <laughs> yeah. uh, most of us have been told to wash our hands furiously and we've all had yes. sanitizer. Yes. That must mean that 
these guys can't survive on our hands anymore. What's, what's the consequence of that? It is important to wash your hands, especially after you've been to the bathroom, for instance. I mean, that you might have uh, uh, bacteria on your hands that are not supposed to be on your hands because you've just wiped your butt. Yep. But, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you for, <laughs> Thank you for explaining yeah, that bit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then you want to wash them off. Uh, but you also don't want to wash off the bacteria that are supposed to be on your skin because they're so super helpful. Um, they actually help protect us uh, from uh, other microbes that could make us sick. They sort of form this barrier that they have to penetrate first before they can actually yeah, sort of colonize us and actually make us sick. In the same way, the diversity of microbes on our hands can be depleted. The sanitization of urban spaces has reduced the diversity of microbes in cities, and lack of exposure to microbes from an early age is thought to have a number of consequences. That shift in diversity, that, that, that well, depletion of diversity, um, has had many different um, effects on our health. So what we see now, mainly in our industrialized West, is that there's a lot more allergies, a lot more autoimmune diseases, which is simply because we're not in contact with microbes anymore. We're not in contact with nature. And that means that we get a kind of a lazy immune system that starts reacting to harmless substances, which means an allergy, or even starts reacting to your own body cells, which means an autoimmune disease. So that, um, that drift away from nature that we see nowadays in our, in our Western society really is starting to affect your own health.